Greetings my friends and welcome back to the channel. This is Legendary Tabletop and today we're going to talk a little bit about dungeon tiles which is sort of a subject that's been made very very popular here on YouTube and pretty much any craft nerd channel that you visit will have tutorials on dungeon tiles and I didn't want to try and reinvent the wheel here though I have my own philosophy about dungeon tiles which I will get into during this video. Now I have over the years made several different types of dungeon tiles and I like to kind of make uh, what I call flavors of dungeon tiles. So of course I have the classic gray stone dungeon tiles, I've made cave tiles, I've made sewer tiles, and so now I like to kind of try to make some tiles that are more like the villain's lair, or a catacomb, or a vampire's mansion, and you see here I'm scrolling along on the Loot Studios, one of my favorite 3D printing miniature uh, subscription services. And while going through this uh, Night Hunters bundle here, which is sort of this vampire, uh, undead themed bundle, and I'm seeing a lot of cool terrain. Now, it's not practical to resin print terrain like this if you're going to build the walls, but printing out little elements like this to add to the tiles, to add to the walls, um, to make the flavor of your RPG game, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons, or maybe Pathfinder, or even stuff like Vampire the Masquerade. And I also too want to show you some of the other stuff here from Loot Studios. Obviously I'm going to have a link below to their stuff, but I've been subscribed to them for almost a year now and I find that their subscription service will give you everything you need for kind of small little adventures for your campaigns. They have terrain, they have little objects, they have enemies, they have heroes, they have monsters and it's just perfect for these type of games and loot kind of totally creates a new cool theme every month and for $15 it's an amazing subscription. So we're going to 3D print some of those pieces I show you, this, the brazier, the statue that we saw for a little bit up on the browser there, and those pillars. And I'm just kind of checking out some of my old dungeon tiles and playing around with those. I'm going to kind of obviously make the new ones match up with them so they're interchangeable. And I make these dungeon tiles a little bit different than maybe what you've seen. For me, I am about rooms more than tiles. And this is that cool little like clock tower pillar, creepy pillar thing. And so my idea is, is that I'm going to use these pillars for like an interesting wall for the dungeon. And I'm going to fill the rest of the walls with the pieces that I didn't really print with just some XBS foam here that I have left over from a gazillion other projects. Now in terms of how I use dungeon tiles different from maybe how you use them or other games that, that you've participated in, um, for me too many walls can obstruct the view and I like to sort of have the tiles laid out on the table to just sort of suggest the walls and then I build just a few walls to add in certain spots to create the ambiance and the flavor um, and I'll use that for like doorways I'll use that for like special like treasure or traps whatever you're doing in the dungeon um, you want to have your players to be able to to look but also whatever works for you works for you and this system works for me and works for my players and I do have some like smaller 
tiles to do like hallways, but for the most part, I'm primarily making all of my different dungeon tiles, whether it's sewers, caves, cities, dungeons, whatever. They're all going to be basically these 6x6 six six squares, these 6 inch walls, and so that they're all easily interchangeable. Now, they are also reversible. So you see here, I put the, the brazier on these wall pieces, and now I've busted out my hot knife. No, I haven't smoked meth and started going super duper fast here. I've sped up the footage here, and I'm just using this cool little hot wire tool, which is something like $10 or something on Amazon. And God bless anybody out there who crafts and cuts out individual bricks, but I'm sorry, you people are insane and I'm not going to do that. And this method is much faster, does the job, looks just fine, and I like it for my games. And busting out my tin foil here and I'm just doing the old tin foil stone texture on these brick walls here. And I'm going to slowly hit all the pieces and I've just glued everything together with just some hot glue. Every now and then I'm just taking the pieces that I've made and lining them up on my dungeon tiles just to make sure everything lines up. It doesn't have to be 100% scientifically accurate. This is a game of imagination for nerds so I think inaccuracies are okay. Now we're going to do that world famous Black Magic Craft base coat here with the Mod Podge and the black paint. I'm going to prime all of our pieces and then we're going to go for a different sort of scheme. I don't have anything that's really red. I have the gray tiles, I have a sort of greenish sewer tiles, I have some like tan temple tiles, some brown cave tiles, and then we're going to make this kind of creepy haunted color, some like Halloween type vibe. And I'm going to do a base coat of a purple here. And this is going to be sort of the undercoat. It's going to be a tone that is going to remain underneath. And I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to put other colors on top of it. But I want that purple color to bleed through and show. Gradually, I'm getting through these tiles. I sped up the footage a little bit just to get through. Now, the resin pieces are a little bit heavier than the foam, so there was an issue with the pieces falling over. So I put some metal screws into the foam pieces, uh, three for each piece, in order to just give the pieces just a little bit of weight so they are, aren't sliding around the table or getting knocked over all the time. And then I tested them out to make sure that they, they stood a little bit better and they worked out just fine. And now I am using this craft paint, this, uh, I believe it's a craft smart, which is the generic Michaels craft paint. And it's just comparable to Apple Barrel paints. It's a really inexpensive um, paint you can grab for like 50 cents to a dollar for a little bottle like that. And I found this wine color and I really like it for the tile. It works really well with the purple and it's not quite red so it has this uh, believability like you could actually see buildings. I even have like cobblestones in my neighborhood here in Chicago that have cobblestones with a similar color here so there's just kind of like this realism to it and the purple seems kind of sinister. And now I'm taking a true red and I'm going to highlight some bricks and some of the writing here on these little monoliths to give these boys some character. And then also the little roofs of these little uh, towers that I've put on the ends of 
my wall tile. I'm grabbing some orange and some yellow and I'm creating a little gradient here on these little sinister creepy towers here. And I'm just creating this little gradient here and then now I'm taking the yellow in the center and all the paints are still wet like and I'm, I'm just doing a small subtle wet blend here just to kind of create this cool little effect and I think it looks really good and uh, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna apply a couple more coats of it because this acrylic paint tends to be very vibrant when it's wet but once it dries the appearance is a little more subtle and then here uh, you have the tiles so far and they're looking pretty cool but we're not done yet I've painted the little statues and it's turning out to be a cool little set and I'm taking this uh, Vallejo uh, purplish color here it's like a a light purple and I get into the cracks here to make the floors of the tiles as well as the walls appear as if they are glowing pretty cool and I'm really liking how these are coming along and they're gonna make a really great like boss room or just like a vampire's layer something or like a, a cultist's layer just a different dungeon and I'm gonna put a little teal turquoise-ish glow onto the braziers I think these uh, this turquoise color is a perfect juxtaposition to the red it's gonna make a really great contrast and I'm taking a white and just blending that wet paint before it dries to create a little gradient here for some poor man's object source lighting. And now I'm going to do a similar effect on these lanterns. And I'm only going to do it on one side. My thinking behind this is that the players get into the dungeon and like the lanterns are on the side that is not glowing and then maybe something happens where the villain does something you know like a trap goes off and you turn the walls around and you have this creepy glow something's happened and the players don't know what it is but it's cool and uh, I can't wait to get these tiles onto my Sunday night RPG night where I play Dungeons and Dragons with some friends and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. We're gonna roll that beautiful bean footage. We'll see you next time.